What's going on YouTube? I'm Slick, that's Slick Jackson, and if you're looking for the coolest, grooviest content on the site, well, you've come to the right place. So, I've been trying to piece together this whole Netflix walkout thing lately. I'm sure you know a bit about the story, or at this point, most of it, since I am pretty late to this whole thing. Obviously, Dave Chappelle, someone who I've heard is one of the greatest comedians of all time right now, is getting cancelled. Or, you know, something along those lines. So, yeah, Dave Chappelle did a few stand-up routines for Netflix, the last of which is named the closer. Uh, in this show, a large focus is on the LGBT community, you know, mostly the trans community. He makes a lot of jokes about them, and in true Chappelle style, they're pretty mean. I mean, that's kind of comedy for you, right? You don't get laughs by being nice, that's for sure. He jokes about turfs, trans people in bathrooms, I think he made a quip about getting into a fight with a lesbian or something, and he made a lot of jokes pertaining to that kind of stuff. It did end off on a surprisingly wholesome note, I'll say that. Nah, I don't know much about comedy, I'll be honest. I didn't even know who Dave Chappelle was before this whole thing, because, well, I live under a rock. But it seems to me that the great thing about comedy is that no one's safe. Everyone gets made fun of. That's what makes shows like South Park or Spitting Image so good. They don't pull punches. That being said, it looks like Dave's stand-up razzed some sides. A lot of fuss was spun up, but the thing that really set things off was this tweet, made by Tara Field, a Netflix employee. I work at Netflix. Yesterday, we launched another Chappelle special where he attacks the trans community. Oh, he attacks the trans community. I mean, that's kind of comedy for you. No one's safe. The way he joked about you would be no different from how he and other comedians joke about everyone else. All while trying to pit us against other marginalized groups. I don't think he was trying to put marginalized people up against each other. The dude's just trying to get a laugh and collect his paycheck. You're gonna hear a lot of talk about offense. We are not offended. Not offended? I beg to differ, but we'll see to that as the thread goes on. Being trans is actually pretty funny if you're someone who actually knows about the subject matter. How could volunteering for a second puberty not be funny? That isn't what he is doing though. Our existence is funny to him, and we object to his harm, we're offended. And that's what I'd consider you to be. You're getting upset at a guy just doing his job. You're getting upset at a guy cracking jokes. I don't know what being offended means to you, but bitching and moaning about jokes, saying they're harmful and stuff, seems like you're offended to me. You know, I'm just saying. What we object to is the harm that content like this does to the trans community, especially trans people of color and very specifically black trans women. People who look like me aren't being killed. I'm a white woman. I get to worry about Starbucks writing Terra on my drink. What harm exactly? I sincerely doubt that a comedy special is going to encourage people to massacre trans people in the name of Almighty Chappelle. Like seriously, what is this point? And that last line, people who look like me aren't being killed, I'm a white woman, like way to invalidate the fears of trans people all over these United States. From what I've seen, a sizable portion of the trans community are worried that they might fall victim to a hate crime, and here you are, downplaying it. What, you're scared of being a victim of a hate crime? <laughs> you're what? Yeah, real slick, man. Promoting turf ideology, which is what we did by giving it a platform yesterday, directly harms trans people. It is not some neutral act. This is not an argument with two sides. It is an argument with trans people who want to be alive and people who don't want us to be. So they say it's not an argument with two sides, and then they proceed to describe how it's an argument with two sides. Like, huh? I don't want to be a broken clock, but again, it's a comedy show. Jokes are made. Some offensive, some not. Like, I don't know. It seems to me you're blowing this out of proportion, but oh well, I guess since I like jokes, I'm taking the side of people who don't want trans people alive. Sorry LGBT community, I want to exterminate you. I like jokes, what can I say? This all gets brushed off as a fence though. I mean, you're literally implying that a comedy show will end up getting a trans person killed or something. I think people have a good reason to brush you off. Because if we're just too sensitive, then it is easy to ignore us. I'm surprised I haven't had anyone call me, ironically, hysterical yet today. Well, I'll say it right now, woman, you're hysterical. You're an absolute loony. You belong in the funny farm. So who does this harm? Why don't we go over the list of some people from the US who aren't offended by Dave Chappelle's special. And this is where the thread gets incredibly disturbing because at this point she lists a bunch of trans people who were murdered for some reason. 
An Otiana Alexander, a 28-year-old black trans woman, was shot to death in Chicago on January 6th. Fran said she had good energy. Tiana is not offended. Samuel Edmund Damian Valentin, a trans man, was killed on January 9th in Puerto Rico. He wrote on January 1st about the new year to come and finding justice in it. Samuel is not offended. Bianca Muffin Banks, a black trans woman, was shot to death in Atlanta, GA, on January 17th. Said the founder of a local housing coalition, Muffin was just blossoming into herself. Bianca is not offended. And he goes on for about 30 posts. Now, first off, I want to say these deaths are tragic, but they prove absolutely nothing. A bunch of random dead trans people who got murdered doesn't prove that a comedian making fun of trans people is harmful. Tragic, yes. But otherwise, it's it's not an argument. It has no correlation at all. I'm, I'm, I'm seriously trying to wrap my head around this reasoning. I think she's trying to say that since a bunch of trans people died, you shouldn't joke about trans people because that's insensitive. Which, if that's the case, newsflash, people die. If we can't joke about people who've died or may die, I mean, you really can't joke about anything or anyone at all, you know what I'm saying? More to the point, this is genuinely awful. Like, words can't describe it. Using the deaths of people who can't speak for themselves to fruitlessly prove a point about a TV show, it blows my mind. Here you are complaining about insensitivity while using the deaths of human beings to further your agenda. Is there no shame? 38 members for our community who are dead because our society devalues trans people and trans experiences, 38 people who just wanted to be themselves, 38 people who in many cases struggled with not having the means to transition the way they wanted to but did it anyway. These are the people that a callous disregard for the lives of trans people by our society have taken from us and they all deserve better. That these 38 people died for the crime of being themselves, that actually does offend me. Again, bad that these guys got shot, it proves nothing. It certainly doesn't prove that, oh, my jokes are bad. Like, there's the all this talk and you can't make a coherent point. How sad. So yeah, that was a horrible thread. Like, I mean, seriously, using the deaths of people to say that jokes are bad, it, I, I just... What? Money, you know, it went viral and it kind of helped to spark all this outrage. Apparently, this person and two others would be fired for trying to attend a director's meeting that they weren't invited to, and another person quit because of it all. Though, apparently, they were reinstated a day or two after that because the staff didn't feel as though they made it obvious enough that they weren't allowed to attend. I don't know what goes on. The special has sparked significant controversy inside Netflix. Shortly after it came out, employees started asking pointed questions about whether or not trans people were included in the decision to air the special and where the company draws a line between commentary and transphobia. Why does it matter if trans people were consulted or not? Like what, are we gonna show it to a trans person they'll be all like, Bahu, Bahu, that's offensive, wah wah. And that should determine whether or not Netflix decides to publish it to their platform. Like, give me a break. So yeah, after all this went down, a walkout was organized, scheduled for October 20th. One of the organizers apparently got fired on suspicion of having leaked or contributing to a leak of Netflix data, to which they had this to say, Oh, these white people are going around talking to the press and speaking publicly on Twitter, and the only person who gets fired is the black person who was quiet the entire time. That's absurd and just further shows that black trans people are the ones being targeted in this conversation like huh did I not just read an article that said that three other people got fired at the time all this was going on? And, I mean, assuming this person did leak the Netflix data, well, I mean, you broke a company policy. What did you really expect? I don't know, after that, two days before the walkout, some demands were made. To keep it brief, they want more resources to go towards content made by and for transgendered slash non-binary individuals, which would be funny to see, as if Netflix doesn't have enough woke shows that they cancel after just one season because no one actually watches woke junk. Revised internal processes on commissioning and releasing potential harmful, sensitive content, including, but not limited to, involving parties who are a part of the subject community and can speak to potential harm or consulting with third party experts slash vendors. So again, kind of fancy wording for, if we get offended by something, you shouldn't publish it, wah wah. But here's something that really stood out to me, right? Recruit trans people, especially BIPOC, for leadership roles in the company, director, vice president, etc., and promote an inclusive environment for them. So what they're essentially demanding is, give us leadership roles, not based on any actual qualification, but literally just because we're a minority. You know, I'm beginning to think there's a motive here. Maybe it's less about protesting harm and transphobia and just grifting their way to the top. But I don't know, maybe that's just me. Eliminate references slash imagery of transphobic titles or talent 
violent inside of the workplace, including but not limited to murals, posted room names, swag. Swag? Is that a typo? Is that, is that like an abbreviation or something? Like swag? What? But like, what kind of posters or room names could Netflix have inside of them that are just like blatantly transphobic? I don't know, sounds like to me that these guys are control freaks, quite sad in it. Acknowledge the harm in Netflix's responsibility for this harm from transphobic content and in particular harm to the black trans community. I'm assuming this is in reference to Chappelle's special and I'll say it again, what harm? What exactly do you want Netflix to take responsibility for? We are employees but we are members too. We believe that this company can and must do better in our quest to entertain the world. Well, you're entertaining me, I'll say that. And then the walkout happened. A lot of media outlets really hopped it up. They said that thousands of employees would just up and leave. But then the figures came out. Turns out like only 12 or 30 people in the protest were actually employees. Most everyone else were just people who showed up to kind of support them. I don't even know if the walkout itself is really much to talk about. Frankly, I don't care enough to check. Although something did happen that piqued my interest. I'm not sure if you guys know who Vito Gesualdi is. I don't really like him. He reminds me of that comic. You know, the one where the guy's like, Guys, look at me. I'm a retard. The other guys are like, Go away, retard. And he's like, Jokes on them, I was just pretending. You know, that's what Vito is to me. That being said, the madman attended the protest and, well, take a look. Honestly, what do I even need to say? Much as I don't like him, I gotta give the guy credit. This was baller as hell. It kind of took a turn when a protester ripped the sign out of his hands and, well, you know the story. Jesus, you can hear the rage in his voice, man. What a fink. The guy breaks the sign, gives it back to him, and tries to accuse him of having a weapon. The dude even, like, helps raise it into the air. Like, Jesus, dude. It's also pretty dangerous, right? Like, you could make people attending the event scared for their very lives. Like, imagine you're at a large gathering and someone shouts, he's got a weapon. You'd probably be a little scared, right? It could cause panic among the crowd. But I guess that doesn't matter because he has a different opinion than you. Like, seriously, this guy's a fink. Then you have this absolute twig trying to push him back. You know, I bet if Vito here really wanted to, he could have just pushed him aside by just walking into her. The jokes are funny, hey, people. Hey, Dan Chappelle is a funny guy. What do I even say to this? This absolute spurg shaking a tambourine in his face screaming repent like a preacher on math. Like, I think it speaks for itself. No one in this video really looks good except for Vito. You have someone trying to get this guy arrested or something by trying to pass off this flimsy old stick as a weapon, a real life stick man trying to push him back, and this messed up loony yelling repent. Like, not exactly the best representation of the waka, is it? But you know, it gets worse. Someone who attended the protest with Vito, the communist, got straight up assaulted. Take a look. Oh, this guy's grabbing my stuff! Oh no, he's grabbing my stuff! This guy's attacking me! This guy's attacking me! Guys. Oh shit! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Get this guy! Get this guy! Yeah, he, he just shoved me into the thing! Yeah. I don't know what all this was at the beginning, but another loony tried to steal this guy's son, and what supposedly happened was this blue masked guy jumped in, shoved him into a concrete sphere nearby. He even shoves him twice for good measure, like he clearly intended to do it. And what's interesting to me is that no one tried to intervene, right? But you just know, like, if this guy tried to fight back, everyone would be jumping to restrain him. Like, yeah, real brave pal, picking fights that you know the other guy can't fight back in. Real tough. And I mean, the funny thing is this is literally all the walkout itself will ever be known for i don't think anyone will remember anything from this event other than the fact that two guys crashed the rally and everyone pissed their pants about it something else i found funny is that if you don't know a month ago Vito called out a youtube podcast called friday night tights ran by nerd Drotic and some other people like the quartering geeks and gamers all those guys they did a podcast with alex jones of all people a no host for infowars and what Vito did was call out this podcast in a tweet he's 
says, The Nerdronics Alex Jones stream is just him screaming about the vaccine doesn't work while these morons laugh and clap. Funny, I could have sworn this type of content was against the TOS. I guess Team YouTube changed their mind. And the intention here, although not clearly stated, is pretty obvious. He's trying to poke at YouTube to get this video taken down, which, you know, is pretty bad for a variety of reasons. But yeah, and then recently he shows up on an interview hosted by Infowars. Like, this dude's a grifter, man. So yeah, all this happens. This media outlet called Variety made some tweets about the matter. The Netflix walkout, which was intended to showcase solidarity with the trans community, grew tense at certain points as protesters clashed with the vocal crowd of the comedian's fans. At times, the Netflix walkout situation threatened to devolve as the counter-protesters pushed against trans speakers. Which is pretty funny. They say that counter-protesters pushed against trans speakers when they show a photo of Twig Boy pushing against Vito himself, which, I mean, kind of contradicts their headline, don't it? And I mean, we saw in the video, we know that the counter-protesters aren't to blame. It was the other guys that pretty much provoked the whole situation. I honestly have no idea why they worded the headline this way. I mean, we can see the video for ourselves. Why lie about it? And I do say lie, because there's no way that they themselves didn't see the video for themselves, unless they're that incompetent at their job. So, yeah, they took these tweets down because people might be stupid, but you can't really control the narrative when people People can literally see what happened for themselves. No, who knew? Apparently, one of the organizers of the event had old tweets resurface of them saying not so flattering stuff. I'm not gonna read them out, but, but you can read them for yourself. You no, know, at some point, they actually released an apology for these tweets. Let's read it. At the heart of my math addiction. What the fuck? What? Oh, huh? Alright, I'm not gonna read any more of this. I think that... I don't know, I think I'll leave it at that. But yeah, take what you want from that. One of the organizers for an event protesting bigotry had to make an apology for saying bigoted things. And with all this going on, Mr. Chappelle pretty much ignored it all, but he did briefly address it in one of his, you know, stand-up routines. To the transgender community, I am more than willing to give you an audience. But you will not summon me. I am not bending to anybody's demands. You know, you really love to see it. When people get up in arms about someone, the person in question usually bows down to save face. It's refreshing to see a celebrity with a spawn, you know what I'm saying? I saw a lot of people mention the movie Cuties throughout this whole fiasco. Cuties obviously being a movie where 13, 14 year olds, you know, teenagers were being sexualized. A lot of people kind of wondered, well, where was the outrage by the Netflix employees then? I mean, let's look about this reasonably. A movie where kids as young as 13 are sexualized versus a comedian making jokes. Which one is worth getting angrier over? So it's like, teenagers will get sexualized, Netflix will broadcast it to the whole wide world, the employees, oh yeah, they're okay with that, they'll sit idly by. But a comedian tells jokes that you don't like, that's the breaking point. That's the straw that broke the camel's back. Like, come on. So, yeah, all in all, I think the walkout was kinda dumb. Just a bunch of people bitching and moaning over jokes. They'd like you to think it's something more, that there's meaning to it, that they're protecting trans people or something, but all it is is bitching and moaning. Funny thing is, I think the walkout had the opposite effect of what they were going for. They were looking to, I don't know, maybe not cancel Chappelle outright, but they still tried to drag him through the mud, you know? And honestly, I can say it backfired. I mean, I don't know comedy. I didn't even know who Dave was before this whole thing. I live under a rock, you know, like I said before. But this whole situation kicks up, and I investigate it, I watch the special, I had a good time. I personally enjoyed the closer. I might just check out Chappelle's other works, you know? So it's kind of like the Strassand effect. They try to shut him down, and all they really ended up doing was making him more popular. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if this was some 4D chest from Netflix to advertise the special, you know what I'm saying? That would be something. So, yeah, it's a mess of a situation, but I sorted it all out. Or, at least, I hope I did. Well, that's all I've got for this shtick. Nah, do old Jackie a favor and keep it groovy. Thank you, thank you very much.